Um, Brett says, which singer band needs a movie in your opinion? Ooh, man. Ooh. Well, I'll tell you right now, I've been waiting on a Kiss biopic. That would be a fun bi- Because I've read pretty much at least fully two of the four members' biopics. Because they all have biopics. I read some of Gene Simmons and I read some of uh, Ace Frehley's. But <clears throat> Paul Stanley's and Peter Chris's books are enthralling. And they're very different. That's what's cool, cool about it is you get two different sides of the story. Because I'd say in Paul Stanley's book... He shit talks everybody, but he really shit talks Peter. And so in Peter's book, he doesn't go that route. He just pretty much tells the truth about everything across the board. He doesn't really, um, I, I'll just say, I think Peter's is the most fair. Um, but if you're looking for like, um, like sex stories and stuff like that, you'll definitely get that in Peter's book. Whereas Paul, he kind of, he talks about that stuff, but he just kind of skips over it, you know? just kind of brushes over it nothing nothing too like in depth whereas peter oh my god you'll get like whole chapters just talking about the groupie experiences that he had you know so i guess it depends on what type of mood you're in so man if they could make a kiss movie um oh my god they they could literally make a, an entire tv season out of it uh, because there's just so much to tell it'd be hard to capture it all in in two hours you know, so yeah, I think that'd be my number one answer. I would, and I know they've been talking about doing a Kiss movie for forever, but uh, you know, even if you don't like Kiss, oh my God, they're one of the most unique bands visually um, ever. They were on top of the world in the '70s, and I think there's really a, a, an interesting story to tell. And I think the most important or the most interesting part of the story would be their rise. You know, how they ended up putting on the makeup. And, um, you know, them doing a live and then really blowing up. Um, yeah, I think that would be an awesome part of the movie. And just how really all four members just could not get along. Just constant fighting. And uh, that just makes for uh, very entertaining um, content. Patrick he says, uh, Hey, Lee, what is the most difficult song you have covered on drums? Um Probably 46 and 2 by Tool. Anything Tool does is pretty challenging. And uh, I always like, uh, because I've, I was, I've been in a few bands, and being able to pull off that stuff live in front of an audience was definitely a rush. But, uh, yeah, by far, I think 46 and 2, because there's also like a drum solo part in the, like the final section of the song. And it's the type of, like, if you mess up, if you throw it off, it throws everything off. So there was definitely some uh, some pressure when I would play that stuff. Uh, but I, I, I always liked challenging myself when I would when I would play drums. And um, I'm trying to think, most, yeah, mostly tool, any kind, anything by Dream Theater would definitely be challenging. Um, and, and hey, look, I'm not, I'm no Neil Pert, Peart or anything. Uh, I've played, but I can play like Tom Sawyer. But it definitely takes some mental focus, right? Um, speaking of drumming, though, I will tell you right now, who is a phenomenal drummer. Uh, and I just, like, I always knew he was a great drummer, but I dug into, like, a lot of his 70s catalog is Phil Collins. Um, Phil Collins, everybody knows Phil Collins, but he was in Genesis. And within the past year, I really got into, like, the Peter Gabriel era of Genesis from, like, the early 70s. And I, and uh, Phil Collins was the drummer, and I man, he went on to more like mainstream, um, '80s pop music style drumming uh, later in his career. But he was pretty much playing like jazzy fusion, uh, progressive rock type drumming, and a lot of that stuff's really challenging. And, um, I, and now I've really gotten into like those those albums like Foxtrot. And um, 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 what's the other album? Uh, Nursery Crimes. Man, those two albums are amazing by Genesis. So if you want some good drumming, yeah, definitely go that route. I talked about uh, James Kotak, who just passed away, um, who uh, played for Kingdom Come, played for Warrant, played for quite a few other bands. And he was a damn good drummer. And there was a lot of stuff that he played that some of his fills 
were quite challenging. And that's stuff that I always enjoyed playing. Uh, Cody, what's up, brother? How you doing? Uh, Brandon Tabato in the house, too. Um, a- Allison Change Dirt is still the best album ever made. Man, I tell you, um, um, the drummer for Allison Change, Kenny? God, what's Bra- Brandon, what's his first name? I love his drumming style, you know? Uh, he just had a certain, like any drummer that had, like as soon as you hear them, you know, you know automatically, boom, that's that's a great drummer, uh, because he has just a distinct style. Uh, yeah, that's and uh, Sean Kenny, I think that's his name, Sean Kenny from Allison Chains. Though, man, his fills were so unique sounding, and I just always, I, it, they might not have been the hardest, but you know creative wise uh just i mean so unique right like he he would always like with his fills he he always comes up with something that's thinking outside the box right and those are like my favorite style drummers i'll tell you another drummer that i absolutely love and i have played uh one of his songs live is jimmy chamberlain from smashing pumpkins oh my god jimmy chamberlain um is one of the best up top drummers ever and uh, like Sean Kenny, he doesn't really use a double bass at all. Uh, but man, really fast and creative up top and uh, just really innovative type drummer. And uh, one of the bands I was in, we played Cherub Rock off of uh, Siamese Dream. And uh, that's, a, that's a pretty challenging song to play on drums. And uh, I, I always, you know, I was always pretty proud of myself after we finished that one, you know? Really, really fun. So I always liked to play, not necessarily super fast, but just challenging songs. Um, I'm more of an up top drummer, even though I do play double bass. You know, I've had a double bass pedal, you know, for the last 30 years. And, uh, but I'm not just one of these drummers that the, the entire thing is just, you know, I like kind of a variety of different patterns and, you know, uh, fills and, and just different. I like different things. I like waiting for the next thing coming around the corner when I'm playing, you know, I don't like, uh, playing a song that's just the same thing all the way through. Right. And there's a lot of that stuff. So, yeah. And I, I'll tell you right now too, I've screwed up playing live. You know, I always like to challenge myself, but, um, when you challenge yourself, you're going to uh, make mistakes and you're going to screw up sometimes. And there have been gigs where I might have like dropped a stick, you know, or screwed up a fill or something like that. And then you got to know how to bounce back when you do that stuff, how to get back to one. Right. And, uh, you know, that's where I guess, um, for lack of a better term, good drumming comes into play, you know, because sometimes you can get lost and then shit. What, what, you got to stop the song. You know, that's, I can say this right now. I have never once had to stop a song with the band. I've always been able to pick back up and get back to one. Right. But, um, Muse, I've played some Muse. Uh, and uh, I tell you, Dom from Muse is a really great challenging drummer. Check out a song called Assassin by Muse. That is some great freaking drumming. Okay. And uh, I, I played that one live. And boy, you gotta you definitely got to stay on your toes when you play that song. So, yeah. I'll say right now, some of you might not know this, but my opening music in all my videos is my son. My son's band. Or he had a band back then. He doesn't have a band now. But my son is an amazing drummer. And uh, he is super, super fast uh, on the double bass. Um he likes a lot of music that I like, but he went through a period in his life where he was playing uh, mostly like hardcore, you know, metalcore type stuff. And boy, he is he is a super fast double bass drummer, but he all, he's also really good at breakdowns and whatnot. So it's kind of cool to have a son that's really into drumming and we kind of feed off of each other. I have actually learned a lot from my son and he's learned from me because I taught him. I taught him how to play drums. And so that's just, you know, and it just kind of adds to our relationship with each other too. You know, we still, like today, I sent him uh, a freaking uh, St. Anger cover. Uh, can, you know, because you have all these musicians on YouTube now and uh, they create 
uh, their own version. And the, the video is Saint Anger, but it's 23% angrier and it's freaking awesome. What's up, guys? You are at the end of the DD Live clip. Uh, what I do is I like to clip these out if I think the, the topic is important or something that's newsworthy. So thank you for watching. And uh, if you want to watch more, you can you can go over here. You can go over here. Click on one of those. And uh, yeah, and, uh, hopefully I can do this for 20 seconds, which I think I did. Okay, so yeah, thanks for watching, guys.